It was here at last. We had read about it for years, wondered what it would be like. Now the dream was coming true. The first television tower rose in the Ohio sky. Step by careful step, the first television pioneer climbed to the top of the steel mast that was to send pictures to us through the air. Looking out across Ohio to the horizon, he saw opportunity on every side. More than a million homes within range of this first tower, more than a million families he could entertain and inform, commerce he could stimulate from giant mill to corner store, schools, libraries, universities, whose vast resources he could open to new thousands. He saw all these things. Here in Ohio, TV began. At first you had to step down to the corner to catch a glimpse of TV. It was a surefire gag for cartoonists and comedians on the radio. Then a few pioneering souls brought TV into their homes, and with it most of the neighbors crowding around to help work all the different knobs, stare for hours at ball players, the tap dancers, the wrestlers, the matinee idols of yesterday and all the men and women talking and singing and acting their parts on the tiny seven-inch screen. It was wonderful, but it was only the beginning. In the stations, at the laboratories, TV people kept on working, perfecting, making the programs and the pictures better and bigger. And TV began to grow. First there were hundreds of sets, then thousands, then hundreds of thousands, almost a million antennas bringing in the picture, changing the skyline, so the families below could watch the never-ending parade of singing, dancing, acting, of sports and news as it happened. Television was here, and everybody was watching. But there still were problems. Some families who wanted to watch lived so far away they had to put up antennas taller than their houses to pull in the picture. And there were large cities which wanted their own stations to serve their own community needs and provide greater program variety. Today, television is meeting these problems, adding new stations, providing more powerful transmitters for the old one. This is one of the new stations, the one and a half million dollar plant from which WKBN-TV beams its programs to us from Youngstown on Channel 27. Heading WKBN operations, Warren Williamson, Jr., general manager, who keeps a close eye on every detail of his station's video programming. These are busy days at WKBN-TV, from the executive offices, where the general manager and program director Don Bryce plan their shows and lay out the Channel 27 schedule, to the scene shop, where production crews design and build the settings for TV shows by and for Youngstown people and their neighbors. The focus of this backstage activity is here in the staging area, one of the studios from which WKBN beams its programs. At WKBN, Northeastern Ohioans have one of the most modern broadcasting centers in the United States, high point of a record of broadcasting service which began in 1926 when WKBN brought Youngstown its first radio broadcasts on a tiny transmitter located in Warren Williamson's living room. Planning and experimenting for WKBN television began back in 1930, when to most of us, TV was something you read about in Buck Rogers. From studios in downtown Youngstown, television station WFMJ-TV beams its programs to viewers on channel 73, another of the newer ultra-high frequency channels added to the television band. Here in the WFMJ building, a staff of more than 80 is at work. Let's go along with production chief Jay Frommert and commercial manager Len Nasman as they step inside the studio. The studio is on the air and the cameras are focusing on WFMJ-TV's kitchen corner. Marjorie Mariner is demonstrating a new dessert recipe. And all over this part of Ohio and part of Pennsylvania, that means a tasty surprise for the man of the house at dinner tonight. Like most of video cooking experts, Marjorie is a professional home economist who also knows the practical side of providing tasty and economical meals for her own family. Her viewers aren't the only ones who know Marjorie's a good cook. When the floor manager signals the time's up, everybody heads for the kitchen set, and the results of Marjorie's cooking skill disappear just like this. 
Today, Upside Down Cake was on the menu, and sending out those big, delicious-looking close-ups of it makes a man hungry. Already on a full TV schedule, WFMJ-TV has even bigger plans for the future. Here at its transmitter site, a new broadcasting center will be built with eight radio and television studios. With two of its allotted three stations on the air, Youngstown's TV picture looks bright. This is Akron, the first national tower, transmission point for the programs of the big new WAKR television center. WAKR-TV newsmen keep a constant check on all sources of news. Their job is to supplement national TV news coverage by giving Channel 49's viewers a close-up look at significant events close to home. A bulletin on the Press Association wire, a quick briefing in the newsroom, fitting the new developments into the story as a whole. And newsmen and cameramen are on their way to get the story and the pictures for their viewers. Program director Blue Wright works closely with the news department, changing his program schedules if necessary to get the news on the air as it happens. Moments later, the news director and his newsreel cameramen are set up and ready to get the story. This time it's news from the office of Akron's mayor manager about efforts to solve the downtown traffic problem. The newsman asks the question viewers would want to ask if they were there as TV covers the news. Eastward along the Lake Erie shore, Ashtabula welcomes its own television station, not only for entertainment, but as an important factor for a better community. Often, the cars which roll down Highway 46 and turn in at the roadway some three and a half miles south of town are those of public officials in Ashtabula and other nearby cities heading for the smartly designed brick building which houses the studios of WICA-TV. Here and throughout the fast-growing television industry, administrators know that along with entertainment, viewers want programs that render service to the community. Focal point for the best entertainment programs available, this control room is also the communication center for video programs of special community interest. Topped by General Manager John Collin and Program Director John Strassen, the staff of WICA-TV regularly brings public officials before its cameras to report directly to the people. These representatives of the Ashtabula Police Department and the State Highway Patrol are giving Channel 15 audiences up-to-the-minute information on highway conditions. Television like this means not only safer motoring, but a community which knows its public servants better and understands the job they're doing. Now we're looking down Lincoln Way in Massillon, Ohio. Another example of why television has been called America's fastest growing industry. Not long ago, only a dozen stations were on the air here in Ohio. Soon there may be three times that many. And one of them is located here, in the Ohio City that's famous for fine steel and fine football. Outside of Bender's restaurant, quite a crowd has gathered to get a first look at the design for Massillon's own TV station, WMAC-TV, another project of the publishing and broadcasting enterprises of Ohio's Ed Lamb. Selected to head the staff of WMAC-TV is young Jim Bushman, head of video operations at 30. He's a young man in a young industry. Here atop one of the gently rolling hills northeast of Massillon, Jim can look out over a rich industrial and farming area. WMAC-TV's programs will go out to it on Channel 23, still another of Ohio's new windows on the world. In Cleveland, first Ohio City to have its own licensed commercial TV station, TV continues to grow. Nine out of ten families have their own television receivers now. Some have two or even three. Cleveland Television is growing along with its audience with authorization of three new channels, one reserved for educational TV and higher power for the three existing channels. The signal to go ahead with WHK's video plans finds Radio Cleveland almost ready to house Channel 19's television shows. For years, this big plant at 5,000 Euclid existed only as a wood and cardboard model and as a dream in the minds of some of Cleveland's pioneer broadcasters. 
The dream was of the day when this building, with its more than 100,000 square feet of floor space, its theater studio, seating 1,400 spectators, would be a reality, sending out TV as well as radio programs. And now for H.K. Carpenter, Executive Vice President of United Broadcasting Company, and for WHK's General Manager, K.K. Hackathorn, and their staff, the dream is coming true. Further down Euclid Avenue in its Bulkley Building Studios, radio station WERE looks ahead to television. Here are some of Cleveland's outstanding young broadcasters. General Manager Richard Kloss, Program Director Ed Stevens, Sales Manager Richard Arbuckle, planning with President Ray T. Miller and Ray Miller Jr. for their challenging opportunity to add sight to sound, to send not only words and music, but pictures, too, along the air lanes on Channel 65. Here in the NBC building in Cleveland is one of the three stations for whom the Federal Communications Commission has authorized higher power. This is the home of station WNBK. Besides serving as a relay point for NBC network programs, WNBK presents a varied schedule of Cleveland-originated shows from studios like this where every technical facility is available for the best in television. Newscaster Tom Field reports on news of the day, and meanwhile, WNBK makes some TV news itself. In the executive offices, General Manager Lloyd Yoder, former All-American football player from Salem, Ohio, confers with fellow executive Hamilton Shea, head of NBC New York City operations. The conference centers around plans for WNBK's new transmitter. It's a million dollar project in suburban Parma, vastly increasing picture quality and transmission range as NBC in Cleveland shifts from channel four to channel three. Under the guidance of the man at the right, Chief Engineer Eddie Leonard, who put Cleveland's first radio station on the air 30 years ago. In Playhouse Square are the downtown studios of WXEL, a theater turned into a video show place. Mr. and Mrs. teams are common in front of the cameras, but at WXEL there's one at work in management too. General Manager Franklin Snyder and Public Relations Director Barbara Snyder. Together with key department heads in charge of production, sales, and engineering, they keep a close eye on WXEL's active program of sports, news, and other locally produced shows, which may be viewed from this observation window high above the big theater studio. Like other TV administrators, the Snyders have learned that television means endless checking of one detail after another. For WXEL, too, the change to higher power and a switch from Channel 9 to Channel 8 means that programs originating here at Playhouse Square and the shows televised from WXEL's Parma Studios or from remote locations like ballparks and football stadiums reach more viewers with the highest picture quality. The move to higher power is the year's number one project in Cleveland. And at the WEWS building, General Manager James C. Hanrahan and Station Director J. Harrison Hartley coordinate the factors involved in the changeover. WEWS remains on Channel 5, where maximum power means greatly expanded audience for its programs. A variety of programs designed not only for entertainment, but for self-improvement, like the Paige Palmer Show, which brings the feminine viewer up to date on the latest face, figure, and fashion trends. Although designed for women, the program regularly attracts a sizable male audience, too. Like the other TV stations with which it shares the Northeastern Ohio picture lanes, WEWS knows that for modern women and their menfolk, mere beauty isn't enough. And so, educational and cultural programs are offered. In the Western Reserve University telecourses, college professors have proved adept at switching from classroom to TV studio and picking up video techniques. WEWS presented the nation's first full credit college courses taught by television. Today, the partnership of educators and telecasters is an active one. To the WEWS studios come leaders in business and the arts, science and government, like Secretary of the Treasury George Humphrey, T. 
taking time out from a busy schedule to chat with news analyst Dorothy Fulltime and her viewers, giving them a chance to size up one of America's leaders in a relaxed, informal video visit. But the heart of television is show business, and the last few seconds just before airtime are charged with the traditional tension and excitement of the theater at curtain time. For the name act, or the young performer just starting out, the really big moment comes when the spotlight shines down, the music starts, and the tiny red light in front of the camera signals, you're on the air. Then it's up to the performer, up to him to hold the toughest audience in the history of show business, an audience that pays no admission, that can walk out on the show by just a click of the switch, because it has good seats for two or three other shows the same night. It takes showmanship to hold that audience. The camera focuses on still another setting. The scene changes, a dance team struts and twirls and leaps before the camera. Their number ends, and before the applause has died away, another performer comes before the cameras to take their place in the unending effort to entertain you. Upstairs, away from the music and commotion of the studio floor, the engineer is working to make the big show even bigger. Like his counterparts in other Cleveland stations, Chief Engineer J.B. Epperson works out the technical details of a move to higher power, plotting the increased transmission strength that will bring WEWS programs sharply and clearly to a northeastern Ohio area nearly double that which it has served since 1947. He's enlarging the old coverage area shown by the first circle to include all within the second circle and a sizable extra coverage area outside this theoretical boundary line. All WEWS engineering efforts have pointed toward this increased transmission range and improved picture quality beamed from the tower to outlying sections. The goal is the goal of all you have been watching. Of the newscasters bringing you their accounts of events as they happen. Of public officials of your city, county, state and nation reporting to you. The program of fashion helps for the feminine viewer. And of home repair advice for the man of the house. The newsreel coverage of important events here at home. And the dancing, singing, acting that are the heart of show business the millions of dollars worth of equipment, the endless hours of planning and preparing and performing, they're all for you, for your family, so the television stations of Northeastern Ohio can parade a world of entertainment and information right before your eyes. 